Bring the beauty of sunflowers into your home with this stunning Macme Sunflower Wall Hanging. here and welcome to Potion at Macrame. This is the channel where you will find everything macrame related. We tend to release a lot of macrame DIY patterns and helpful tips and tricks videos. If you guys are keen on learning more macrame, make sure you click the subscribe button and then also give this video a big thumbs up. If you're looking to add some life into your home decor, then you have come to the right place. In this tutorial, we will be going over how to make a macrame sunflower wall hanging with tassels. Not only is this beautiful two-tone wall hanging visually stunning, but it is also super fun to make. I would say the trickiest part of the pattern is the sunflower ring in the center of the pattern. But once you have gotten a hold of making double half hitch knots, repeating those little petals on the ring will come very easy. Do you need several materials for this project? You need two different size rings, two different colored cords, and then also some string. I will post a full list of all the materials required right after this intro. If you're interested in checking out the materials that I've used directly in this tutorial, you can head on over to bojinot.com for more details. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced macrame maker, you are going to love the result of this project. And with that said, let's get right into it. Before we begin, you will need some materials and supplies. I will be using a 12 inch wooden ring for the dream catcher itself and then a 12 centimeter diameter ring, the metal ring in the center, to make the floral design for the center of the dream catcher. This is going to be an add-on on top of the piece to give it some extra texture. I will be using two different colored cords today for this pattern. The first is a black and gold three millimeter cotton cord. This is a beautiful single strand cotton cord with gold metallics spun with it. And then we'll also be incorporating some natural colored cord with the piece as well. These are both from my rainbow cord line. If you guys are interested, I'll post links to that in the video description below. We're going to start with the flower pattern on the smaller ring first. Take one strand of cord at 350 centimeters long and instead of folding it in half, we're going to make sure that the right cord is only 20 centimeters in length, whereas the left cord is 330 centimeters in length. Turning the ring over to the right, we're going to work with that left cord, the longer cord. Then taking the strand of cord at 620 centimeters long, fold it in half and attach it onto the left bottom longer cord using a reverse lark's head knot. Taking the loop end from the bottom and from behind. Then taking the right cord underneath the reverse Lars head knot, make a half hitch knot to the right. Repeat the same thing with the left cord on the left side for a half hitch knot on the left.
Repeat the reverse lark's head plus half hitch on both sides with the second strand of 620 centimeter long cord beside the one that we had just done. I'm going to take some tape and tape the ring down so that it doesn't move. You can also pin or tie the ring to something sturdy as well. So we're going to leave the shorter cord on the right and set that aside. Then we're going to take the far left cord and use that as an anchor cord for a row of double half hitch knots to the right. So starting with the next vertical cord to the right as a working cord, make a double half hitch knot onto the anchor cord. Then continue to the right for three more double half hitch knots. Take the next cord on the far left as the anchor cord and repeat for another four double half hitch knots to the right. Now that we have three rows, we're going to turn the anchor cord that we had just used back the other direction. So flip it from right to left, and then we're going to take the vertical cord to the left and use that as a working cord for a double half inch knot. Then continue to the left for three more double half inch knots.
Then taking the far right chord as the anchor chord again, make four double half inch knots to the left. For the very last row of the flower petal, we're going to do something slightly different. We're going to start off with one double half inch knot as per usual, but then after that, we're going to take the working chord that we had just used and include it with the group of anchor chords for the next double half inch knot. So once this first double half hitch knot is complete, include that working chord with the anchor chord and then take the next vertical chord to the left and make a double half hitch knot with the two anchor chords inside. When this double half hitch knot is complete, include the working chord with the group of anchor chords for the next double half hitch knot. And we're going to continue this pattern to the left until all working chords are made into double half inch knots and you should not see any vertical chords, working chords dangling on the side. They should all be gathered at the bottom of the petal. Taking the last working cord from the last double half inch knot of the petal, we will attach it onto the ring using a lark's head knot. So take the cord and fold it on top and to the side. And then take the same cord and go from behind and then through the loop back at the front. Make sure the lark's head knot is nice and snug onto the ring. Then we're going to use that same chord end as an anchor chord for a row of double half inch knots with all of the vertical chords one at a time. This will start the second petal. Before we start, take the vertical chords and bring it inside the ring and out. Then taking that chord end from the lark's head knot and use that as an anchor cord for a row of double half inch knots.
Once these four double half hitch knots are complete, we're going to repeat the same pattern as we did for the first petal and make two more rows of double half hitch knots to the right after and then take the anchor cord and place it to the left and make three rows of double half hitch knots to the left. Keeping in mind that the last row you will need to include the working cord with the next set of anchor cords for the next double half hitch knot. Stop right before you attach the cord onto the ring. So now that the second petal is almost complete, we will take that last working cord and make a Larsa knot onto the ring again. Take the vertical cords and weave it inside the ring and out again and start on your third petal. Keep going around the ring until you've made a total of nine petals, stopping right before you attach the final ninth petal onto the ring. Once all nine petals are complete, we will take the working cord from the last petal and we will attach it onto the ring using a lark's head knot, but we're going to do so on the left side in between the first petal. Then we're going to take that cord end and tie it to the cord at the very start, the other end of the lark's head knot from the very beginning. Tie a double overhand knot. Then with the remainder of the vertical cords, do the same thing and tie a double overhand knot onto the cord at the very beginning. Make sure that the double overhand knot is tied at the back of the floral hoop. Cut off the excess cord on both ends. The floral hoop is now complete. We're going to set this aside for now and come back to it at a later time to attach this add-on onto the Dreamcatcher. Working with the larger hoop now, we're going to take 12 strands of cord, of black cord this time, at 100 centimeters long each, and attach it to the top of the hoop. So just pick an end and attach a strand of cord onto the hoop using a Larsa knot.
Repeat this with another strand of 100 centimeter cord until all 12 strands are attached onto the top of the hoop using Larset knots. So once all 12 strands are attached onto the top of the hoop using Lars head knots, we're now going to work on attaching them to the bottom of the hoop using double half inch knots. So starting with the far left cord, attach it onto the bottom of the hoop using a double half inch knot. Continue to the right until all vertical strands of cord are attached to the bottom using double half inch knots. You may need to space out the Lars head knots at the top to make some room so that the cords are evenly spaced out. So as you can see at the top of the Lars head knots, there are some spaces in between them. That's because the double half inch knots at the bottom take up a little bit more space. So to make sure that they are evenly spaced horizontally, we spaced out the Lars head knots at the top. So now we're going to repeat a similar pattern, but this time we're going to weave the natural cord through the sides of the pattern. Start with a natural colored cotton cord at 105 centimeters long and attach it to the right side of the black pattern using a lark set knot. Then continue with four more strands of 105 centimeter long cords and attach it to the right side with lark set knots. So there should be five on the right side and then repeat on the left side to the left of the black pattern for five lark set knots. We're now going to take a natural strand of cord at 120 centimeters long and in the center of the black pattern, we're going to make a lark's head knot. You may need to shift the cords over on the left side and on the right side to make room for it. You'll also need to make room at the bottom of the hoop so that we can attach the cords onto that part using double half inch knots. But before we make the double half inch knots, we're first going to attach the flower add-on that we had made in the very beginning onto the Dreamcatcher. Take the flower hoop and place it in the center of the Dreamcatcher and then we're going to take those two middle natural cords. We're going to attach it onto the top part of the flower hoop 
using double half inch knots. Starting with the right cord, we're going to weave it in between that top petal to make a double half hitch knot onto the ring. Then repeat the same with the left cord. Take the cords to the back and then attach both of these cord ends onto the bottom of the larger hoop using double half hitch knots again. Now we're going to work on the far left natural cord section by weaving it in between the black pattern. Taking the far right cord of the left natural cord section, weave that cord from behind and in between the first black lark's head knot on the left section. Then weave it through the same opposite section on the right side from front to back. Then take the next cord to the left on the left section and weave it between the next cord section, so skipping a black cord in between the last one. And then also weave it through the right side opposite of where you weaved it through on the left side. So continue with this pattern with all the remaining cords on the left side. So this is what the pattern should look like once it's weaved through the black cords on the left side. What we're going to do now is attach the other end of the cords coming out on the right side onto the right side of the large hoop using double half inch knots. So starting with the far left cord of that section, attach it onto the right side of the hoop using double half inch knots. Then continue to the right until all cords are attached onto the hoop.
So once this side is complete, we're going to work on the right natural chord section, and we're going to essentially do the same pattern, but starting on the top instead. So taking the far left chord of the right section, we're going to weave it top down in between the first lark's head knot on the right section. Then we're going to weave it through on the left side, skipping the first two chords on the left. So skip the first two chords on the left and then weave it through from bottom up. Then take the next chord to the right on the right side and weave it top down, skipping one black chord. Then once it gets to the left side, skip one black chord to the right and weave it back up. Continue with this pattern with the remaining chords on the right section. Once all the cords are weaved through the pattern, we're going to straighten them out and attach them one by one onto the left side of the hoop using double half inch knots again. Once complete, this is what the pattern should look like. We're now going to make a series of tassels at the bottom to finish off this Dreamcatcher pattern. Starting with the middle two chords, make a double overhand knot leaving approximately 2.5 centimeters to 3 centimeters of space from the bottom to the knot. Then we're going to take six strands of cord. So you'll need six strands of short cords at 16 to 17 centimeters long. You can use scrap cords for this to make a tassel. Take the six strands of cord and weave it in between the hole from front to back. Make sure the cord ends at the front and the back are even. And then taking a strand of one millimeter string at about 30 centimeters long, use this to make a gathering knot about 1 to 1.5 centimeters from the top. 
So start with making a loop with one end of the string and then take the long end of the string and gather the cords around several times. Then take that same cord end and weave it through the loop made in the very beginning and pull on the top end to tighten the knot. Cut off the excess string and trim the bottom of the tassel and you are now complete with one tassel. Take the next two cords to the left or to the right, make another double overhand knot, and make a tassel. There should be a total of 23 tassels at the bottom once this is all filled up. Once completed, the bottom should look like this with all tassels. And that concludes our macrame sunflower tutorial. Let me know in the comment section below what your guys' favorite part of the pattern was. Mine was the sunflower part in the middle. I love adding texture to pieces. I also really like the tassels as well. But the added sunflower ring in the middle really makes this whole pattern stand out. If you guys are interested in learning how you can create your own macrame designs just like this one, you can head on over to patreon.com slash for more details on the exclusive macrame tutorials that we release there and how we help you level up your macrame skills. Make sure you tag me on Instagram at bochinot with your guys' completed pieces inspired by bochinot tutorials. And as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.